My name is Richard Sweeney. Um, I'm an artist and I produce artwork in paper mostly. So through folding paper, manipulating, shaping, constructing. Um, I'm interested in the properties of the material, um, its intrinsic properties and how you can form it um, in a sculptural way. Uh, so today at Victor Felix Gallery, we've given a workshop. Uh, myself and my colleague Andy Singleton, who also produces artwork in paper, we've shared our skills and knowledge in paper manipulation, just to let people know how, how we work and also to, to let them explore the medium as well, because it's such an accessible medium. It's so readily available and it's uh, very easily manipulated by hand. It's a tactile medium. You don't need um, a very complicated setup uh, to work with it. Uh, it's quite simple to start, uh, but you can spend a long time trying to master these techniques and to create um, sculptural forms. So um, it was really good today. Everyone had a great time creating some really nice work. Um, now I think everyone went away pretty inspired and some very impressive shapes uh, coming out from the workshop today. Yeah. But a ballpoint pen, uh, an empty ballpoint especially, is really good for this. So, you have this template. All of these lines Okay, so you'll have that. So that's all folded, and you can see already it's starting to take a shape. And if you just hold the paper like this and just curve it over, you'll form a shape like that. So you could potentially stick that together like so. And it's quite a rigid shape, and it can also be free formed, it almost becomes quite like a fabric, you can just sort of push parts in. So just have a play really and see what kinds of shapes and forms you can get from the sheet. Wrap it around more, yeah. Either wrap it around more or reduce the scale of the pattern so that it gives it more give to go around. And folding it around. Okay, and you see how it you just push. So just, just try and push from underneath and popping it out, folding it around. And you can see where these parts that need to, so if you just kind of hold it in your hand like that and then pop from underneath mm -hmm. and then the parts that need to push out again just popping from underneath like that. And And then just fold at 45 degrees mm -hmm. or at any angle yes. you want. Mm -hmm. Push that in like that. And so the pattern mm -hmm. keeps repeating. Then it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. 
So you can keep mm -hmm. going and creating different shapes in that way. And so where this farm's a mountain here, this part will form a valley. So I'm pushing that part in there. So you see how that pushes out and that goes inwards. And I can just repeat that through the paper. And you can do that at any angle as well. It doesn't have to be at 45. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be doing the techniques. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's well worth having a look at that. Yeah, it, really it expands a lot on these yeah. and techniques. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can just uh, take it like so. How to create this. So, start off with the template and crease the central line. All these lines, as you were before with your biro, make sure it's very well creased. And I'll start off folding from here. So you can see how it steps and overlaps, and that's what creates the curve. Like, yeah, I don't think you could get it going straight away. That would work quite nicely. So the difficulty is it wants to just pull itself apart. And it'd work in a three. Sometimes you've just got to work with what the paper dictates, really, and see how far you can take it. So yeah, um, I think you all got the hang of this. Um, these are just a couple of nice variations. Um, so this one is produced by cutting into the pattern. So you can get lots of variation just through cutting different shapes. I started out uh, playing about with this technique, although I'll quickly show this. So the first experiments I did we're simply with one sheet and doing a zigzag. very firm with it, with the biro, um, otherwise again it will start to crease and buckle. And in my own work, as I was saying, it's in watercolour paper. So do you understand the principle of the fold? Is that quite clear? Um, so I've got plenty of paper and if you get stuck at all, I need a hand, just let me know. And. Uh, have a go with that. Cut the next side. So you notice how that edge there just fits in quite snugly like that. So once you have a few of these, you can start joining them together. And if you have enough, they will eventually make a sphere that's quite substantial in size. So this time rather than crease, I'm going to cut the line. And I'm going to draw another line like this. So I'm creating a kind of branch here. And notice how this is quite straight in line with this. It's quite important to keep it um, quite straight to the edge there. Just note how different types of curve give you a different kind of 
fold as well. And when you bring it together, it creates different shapes. You can combine this with the pleated technique. So again, creasing it on opposite sides. So I've flipped the sheet. You can try different line weights, like the different spacing. So going from um, narrow, uh, narrow to wide, so tapering the lines uh, gives quite a, a nice dynamic curve. And um, yeah, just start quite small, really. Start quite small, and then you can make more pieces, and then have a play with how they can go together. We started the workshops last year, um, last summer, and I, th I think w we'd like to take the workshops a bit further. Um, it, it would be nice to uh, do some travelling, travel abroad with them, and maybe uh, do some workshops on a longer scale, so maybe uh, three or four day workshops. Um, and try and build an installation out of the work that's produced uh, by the participants. So I think that's, that's a future ambition for the workshop, to really scale everything up and try and bring lots of people together to build something uh, a bit bigger. Yeah.